eat our food, you put I own Hollyfrost Farm outside the city. To help the it's honest work, if a bit dull. We haven't taken a side because it's not our fight. Hey, maybe the reason these Grayskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. Imperial spies? You can't be serious. Maybe we'll Spare pay you a visit tonight. World we woman. got ways of finding out what you really are. Do you hate the Dark Elves? Are you here to bully us and tell us to leave? You've come to the wrong city, then. Windhelm's a haven of prejudice and narrow thinking. Unworthy of one such as you. Nothing new there. Most of the Nords living in Windhelm don't care much for us. But Rolf is the worst by far. He likes to get drunk and walk around the Grey Quarter yelling insults at us in the small hours of the morning. Oh, a real charm of that one. Some of these Nords will come up with any excuse to despise us. And it isn't just the Dark Elves they hate. They make a target of the Argonians as well. In fact, just about anyone who isn't a Nord is fair game for their bullying. We're one of the same kind, you and I. I'm glad to have met you. Safe travels. my twin sister a while back. Have you ever lost anyone close? saying that Aventus Aretino is doing the Black Sacrament, trying to summon the Dark Brotherhood? Oh, Grimvar, always with the nonsense. No, no, of course not. Those are just tales. Fine, then I'll invite him out to play. He lives right there. I'm going to knock on his door. No, child, wait! That boy, that house, they are cursed. Ha, then I'm right, I knew it. He's trying to have somebody killed. All right, I won't deny it, child. What you heard is true, but Aventus Aretino walks a dark path. His actions can lead only to ruin. Now, enough. We will speak no more of this. I am the only friend you need. a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from Solitude. The Empire's putting a great deal of pressure on White Run. Yes, make it quick. I'm a busy man. It means you have the dragon blood. You have an inborn ability to use your voice the way dragons do. The old tales tell of dragonborn heroes, who slew dragons and took their power. It seems those tales are true, with the dragons returning, and now a dragonborn appearing. Maybe the Greybeards know what it all means. I know more than most. I trained with the Greybeards at High Rothgar when I was a boy. The Way of the Voice is an ancient, spiritual form of magic in which you project your vital essence into a thune, or shout. 
most people would need to train for years before they could even attempt a single shout. The Dragonborn is different. You have an inborn ability to shout, the same way dragons are said to. They live in seclusion near the top of the throat of the world, the great mountain of Skyrim. They're masters of the way of the voice, of shouting. It's a great honor for them to summon you. They speak to very few. In fact, they hardly speak at all. I studied with them when I was young. They taught me how to shout. Yes, they chose me when I was just a lad. It was a great honor, of course. I was to become a Greybeard myself. I spent almost ten years at High Rothgar, learning the way of the voice. Then the Great War came. I couldn't stand missing it. I often think about High Rothgar. It's very disconnected from the troubles down here. But that's why I couldn't stay, and why I couldn't go back. I suppose the Greybeards care about Skyrim's troubles, in their way. But I needed to do something about it. I'm sure Angir would call it one of my failings. Yes, the oldest and most powerful, although he may not seem so. I doubt he's forgiven me for leaving. And for, well, for what he'd consider blasphemy. Using shouts for anything but worship of Kinnereth. Your Dragonborn. The rules don't apply to you. You can shout the way dragons do, without training, through inborn instinct. They always hope to teach the Dragonborn to respect the way of the voice as they do. They never fully succeed. You'll have to make your own decision. It's a beautiful philosophy, but outside the seclusion of High Rothgar, I was never able to hold to it. Yes, they chose me when I was just a lad. I spent almost... I often think... I suppose... I'm sure Angir would call it one of my failings. Yes, although I rarely use my training. The Greybeards believe the voice should be used only for worship of Kidareth. I have fallen from their strict teaching. But I still don't feel it should be used lightly. Not all of Angir's lecturing was wasted, it seems. You're... they always... you'll have to make your own decision. It's a beautiful philosophy, but... They live in seclusion near the top of the throat of the world, the great mountain of Skyrim. They're masters of the way of the voice, of shouting. It's a great honor for them to summon you. They speak to very few. In fact, they hardly speak at all. Not entirely true, though not entirely false either. Any Nord can learn the way of the voice by studying with the Greybeards, given enough ambition and dedication. My shouting torque to the ground proved he had neither. However, it was my sword piercing his heart that killed him. I'm not sure why Talius is wasting his time trying to take Winterhold from us. But if he wants to throw his men away, I'll gladly accept that gift. My father, the great bear of Eastmarch, died during my imprisonment after the Markarth incident. I, his only son, forced to deliver his eulogy via letter I had smuggled out of prison, such as the love of Titus Mead for his subjects. When finally set free, I returned to Windhelm and was greeted by a city in mourning, at one with my own grief and anger, clamoring in angry voices, calling out for justice, for war, they sat me on the throne. 
the throne of Isgomor, the throne of my father. I only hope I can prove worthy of that honor. I killed Torek to prove our wretched condition. How is the High King supposed to be the defender of Skyrim if he can't even defend himself? I challenged him in the traditional way, and he accepted. There were many witnesses. No murder was committed. True, he didn't stand a chance against me. But that was precisely the point. He was a puppet king of the Empire, not a high king of Skyrim. His father before him, perhaps, but not Torig. He was too privileged and too foolish. More interested in entertaining his queen than ruling his country. Indeed, Elisif has become Jarl of Solitude. Historically and conveniently home of the High King, backed by Imperial interests. But the Moot has not yet met the name of High Queen. And they won't. Not as long as I have any say in it. There hasn't been a true High King in Skyrim for generations. For too long, he's been hand-picked by the Emperor and given emphatic nods by milk-drinking Jarls addicted to Imperial coin. It's time we had a real High King, one of our own making. We're fighting because we're done bleeding for an empire that won't bleed for us. Untold numbers of Nords died defending the empire against the Dominion. And for what? Skyrim being sold to the Thalmor so the Emperor could keep his throne. We're fighting because our own Jarls, once strong, wise men, have become fearful and blind to the people's suffering. We're fighting because Skyrim needs heroes, and there's no one else but us. 